How many of you have gone on a vacation to some place you've always wanted to go to? Think about it. For a long time, I was guilty of not being fun on vacations. So I made a conscious effort with my wife, an obligation that I would try and be joyful on every vacation I went on. We have a sort of a tradition in our family. One, one Thanksgiving we spent, we rode a motorcycle to Fairbanks, Alaska. One, one, one Thanksgiving we were in uh, Beijing. I don't know what's in Papa John Pizza. <laughs> two years ago, this month, we went to Australia. We flew to San Francisco. 563 of us boarded an Airbus A380 for the 14 hour and 55 minute fl flight to Sydney. But I was lucky. I had an iPad, I could read the book, I could, I could, uh, I could hear uh, my music, I got up and walked around, I had something to eat, I did all that, and now there's only 12 hours to go. <laughs> but we got there. And for the trip, we stayed, we stayed almost an equal amount of time with Sydney, Melbourne, and Paris, Thomas. I was mispronounced Thomas. We stared at, we stayed at Airbnb and we were, it exceeded our expectations. How could it get any better except on the night we were getting ready to leave, the apartment we were staying in caught on fire. And we were all out in the street, but it was close to fire. Somebody had clogged up the dryer vent. <laughs> they caught it. I love the city. I love the place we stayed. It was a kind of an artistic place. The person that had it, there was a baby grand piano in front of us. There were some theatrical posters on the wall. It was colorful. In Melbourne, we stayed in a, a place near downtown, so everything was in walking distance. Everything about those two things, those two cities, was phenomenal. But I was a school instructor for 25 years, and I always wanted to die at the Great Barrier Reef. <laughs> we stayed in Carnes. And we stayed in a terrible BB. It's like if you looked out the window, 25 feet from our room was a swimming pool, and 150 feet from our room was the ocean. It was, it was magnificent. It was beyond belief. I was fired up to go on this dive. I got up early in the morning, I'm walking the docks, waiting for the people to start loading the ship. I had great expectations. I even laminated a cover of the Toastmasters magazine that I was going to take under the water and have somebody photograph <laughs> This vacation was so great. It fulfilled everything I ever wanted. And then I did the dive. Did I mention I've been an instructor for 25 years and I've always wanted to do this? It fell flat. And then we did another one. In the middle of all this, because I didn't wear a wetsuit the first time, I chilled and I couldn't do the third dive. And I felt bad about that. But then I sat back and looked and said, what did you do wrong? Well, the thing that I did wrong was I approached everything else with the spirit of adventure openness and joy. When I hit that water, I compared it to the other 400 dives I've done, instead of taking it for what it is, for what it was, for what it offered. And it was phenomenal. Phenomenal. Let me do this. Because even when we used to go to Cosmo week in, week out, we'd always used to say, even a bad dive is a good dive. So we're making this journey on our lives, all of us. And we have to decide whether we are going to enjoy this journey or whether we're not going to enjoy this journey. There's a saying in 
Course of Miracles. It says, perception follows judgment. Having judged, we therefore see what we look upon. For sight can merely serve to offer what we would have. It's impossible to overlook what we could see and fail to see what we have chosen to behold. I prejudged. We need to stop prejudging. I want to share this with you. It's from it's your own work. <laughs> I'm not going to share it with you. This is from Ellen yeah. Katie. I don't know if you know of her. She has a book called Opening Doors Within. She wrote it in 1987. What do you expect from life? Do you expect the very best, or are you one of those souls who was always afraid the worst is going to happen? That things will go wrong. If you are, you deserve what is coming to you, for you attract to you what, what you want. That which you love, that which you have, and that which you fear. When your consciousness is negative, you draw negativity towards you like steel to a magnet, and you will find yourself keeping company with those souls of like mind. For like attracts like. When your consciousness is of love, when you are bubbling over with joy of life, and when your heart is filled with gratitude for everyone and everything, you will find yourself drawn towards those happy, joyful souls who radiate love and joy wherever they go. Your life will be filled with the very best life you offer. Why not see the very best in every situation? See the very best being drawn to you now. I want to leave you with this call to action. Start each day determined to see and appreciate all of creation with an open heart and an open mind without judging anything. I guarantee you, your life will be joyful.